What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. Tim and I just got back from an offshore trip. We're fishing Catalina Island right now. Didn't catch any of the bluefin that were out there, but we just showed up to the island and first cast, legal size calico. We're gonna give this a couple hours and see if we can catch anything uh, bigger than this. Hopefully a yellowtail, but stay tuned, it should be fun. inches that's a legal size calico perfect eating size I'm gonna keep that one Delicious. I'm gonna take that one home Rachel's never tried a calico before and I do want to make some fish tacos so <laughs> sorry buddy you're coming home with me Boil back there by the toilet. Right? Yeah. Yeah, fresh on. Oh, all right wow. so I, as you can tell he already lost his color I hit him bonked him on the head so he's out cut his gills so he's bleeding out I'm gonna put him on ice all right, anyone that owns their own boat that comes out to the island or even fishes along the coast that doesn't have like a massive bait capacity, so you can't compete with the sport boats and chum a lot of live bait, get a chum buddy, save your old bait, throw it in here, frozen, and chunk it up. And it attracts all that bait fish right to your boat. Check this out. what that chum buddy is doing is it's creating uh, that little chum slick and it's bringing all the natural bait in the area to the back of your boat so you have a bait ball sitting off the back of your boat eventually game fish are going to find you so instead of chumming live ones and running out of your live bait um, you don't have to throw these guys out you use your frozen ones put them in here chop them up little bits and pieces come out and then you make your own bait ball Yeah, yeah. Oh, barracuda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah kind of into the island, into the structure. So it's taking our baits right back to where all the fish are. Um, we're just hoping that a school of yellowtail comes through. That's obviously our ideal catch, but I'll probably take another legal calico or bonita because some sashimi sounds pretty good. The biggest thing about fly lining is if your bait isn't running back into 
um, into the structure. Look at that barracuda chasing him. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, he's still on it. Oh, he just ate it. Oh. He just ate it. Yep. Right at the boat. Oh, he dropped it. Freaking barracuda. <laughs> Big old barracuda just chased it up. But um, if your bait isn't swimming back into the structure, keep swimming towards the boat or away from it. Give it a couple of... Oh, give it a couple of cranks and they naturally want to swim away from what's pulling them if that makes sense so if they're getting yanked back towards the boat oh, there, we go. there it is oh it popped off again those barracuda are hard to hook on the but uh they're not acting the way you want them to they're swimming in the direction you want them to you can give them a couple of a couple of cranks or even just pull back on the spool a little bit also we have a bunch of beat up bait because we've been up here out here all day these ones they're not going to swim well, so I'll use those ones as live chum. You can kind of tell with the sardine because you can see the red scales and the back actually turns kind of blue. Red nose is also a dead giveaway. So, so I have a nice fresh one right here, just pinning them right through the nose. It doesn't need to be a crazy long cast. Just flick them out there into the current. Make sure that chum buddy has a nice consistent flow of uh, bits and pieces and keep that bait ball right behind the boat. Just wait and see. Oh, I just picked up. Let him soak for just a second. Oh, Tim's on. There we go. Steady wind, steady wind. Let that guy soak out there and see if there's a big calico that wants him. He was way out there. Yeah, dude, Tim was on the long soak. What do you got, buddy? Nope, she's going up. Good fight. Got a decent fight going on over here. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I think your bait was uh on the beach, dude. Oh, nice calico. Oh, fat one. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Nice calico, man. Dude, that's a chunk. Look at the belly on that guy. There you go. Nice, Tim. Dang. We finally caught fish. There we go. <laughs> We've only been out here trolling and slow trolling and deep dropping and all that stuff for eight hours. A few hours? Jeez. Nice one, man. Well, that's legal size. I say we keep them. Get a measure on this one. He's, yeah, no doubt. Just shy of 16? Yeah, that's a nice, that's a perfect eating size calico. Oh, oh, oh shit, we got bit. I think I got seagull bit. Oh. I did, there he is. Drop it! Yeah, dude, got a bird. So we're going to keep that calico, so we got two calicos on, on board. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to unhook this. Unhook this. What happens when you leave a half-dead sardine floating back there, you will eventually catch a bird. At least it's not a cormorant. Those things are super mean. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. All right. I hope you learned Adios. your lesson. Nice weapon there. <laughs> yeah, this thing is... A saving grace for unhooking mackerel or any bait fish you're catching, but basically you just hook the line and it leads right to that that hook right there and you just pop them right off. Beauty. Let's go. <laughs> Alright, let's try to catch a fish, not a seagull this time. Got me, but, yeah. That right there is textbook calico bass. Just like, almost like a cheese grater or like uh, sandpaper just ripped that poor guy apart. Sorry, bud. Not a good way to go. Sorry. So one of the most frustrating things about fishing Catalina Island is uh, the sea lions when they find you. They will come in and ruin any sort of chum line or any anything like that you've been working on for the last few hours however long they'll come in and scare all that all that bait away honestly there's not much you can do once they show up besides kind of sit wait it out stop chumming see if they'll leave um, 
Or what I like to do is start butt hooking the sardines because instead of just biting up to the head where they see the hook and you just reel in just the head, very rarely will a sea lion pick up a butt hook sardine. So I just threw out a butt hook sardine, let it swim way back. Uh, another thing you can do is since we have a bunch of frozen sardines and mackerel, if we were to hook a yellowtail or a bonita that we wanted to keep and there's sea lions around, you can chuck the sardines and the mackerel into the water and obviously the sea lions are going to take the easier meal. They're going to eat the frozen sardine or mackerel that's just floating down. Uh, that way you have a better chance of landing that yellowtail or bonita or whatever you're trying to get in. That has worked for me multiple times in the past, just keeping some bait to throw at sea lions. So the last thing you want to do is finally hook that 20 pound yellow and have three or four sea lions just rip it off your line. Look at Tim knowing what he's doing, getting the chum buddy going. In the mid, baby. Wow. They grow up so fast. <laughs> So another thing you can do if you have sea lions on you is switch to an artificial bait. So right now I'm just gonna throw the surface iron around. Um, again, if I do hook a yellowtail or a bonita or anything I want to keep or land, legal size calico, we have that frozen bait ready to chuck and distract them. Powering off. Dodging all the sea lions. Nice barracuda. These things are very slimy, but I don't want to hurt them too bad. But what I like to do is grab them right here on the gills. You can squeeze right there. Again, very slimy. You're going to have to wash your hands afterwards. That's a bad boy. Alright, there we go. Hooks out. This is a short barracuda, legal size is 28 inches, so back you go. Watch out for sea lions, bud. Good luck. Sorry about that, man. Oops. Oh, God. Had to reel him, reel him in quick so the sea lions wouldn't get him, but that calico bass is honestly about the same size as that surface iron. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Make sure there's no sea lions around. Go, buddy, go. So funny, I fish uh, my surface iron. Tim getting bit on the long side. I love that. <laughs> Jeez, 
wires for you. <laughs> nice one. That one actually might be close to legal size. Oh, baby. Where did I put the pliers? Crap. over the side of the boat. So obviously you want to avoid the barracuda's teeth as I'm standing here barefoot, you want to avoid the barracuda's teeth. <laughs> Did it break your line? I think so. Alright. And you're in the middle? Yeah, that's fine. I Yeah, we're pulling back and trying to get it by the heel. Yeah, that's, that works. Bump. Slime rocket. Yeah. That's pretty close to 28 inches, but we don't want to keep that anyway, so. See you, buddy. Good luck. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. distinct from the Osprey. Did you, guys, did you guys hear it on the GoPro? Probably not. <laughs> I heard him. It's definitely a bald eagle. Yeah. 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 I feel like there's more out here than these. Oh, there's so many. There's one at Kitty Lake now. That's like the pictures, right? Yeah. That's so Yep. It was born here on the west end of Catalonia. Oh wow. That's bad. Because uh, someone took a picture and saw the tag number so you can look them up. Oh yeah. Oh, there we go. There it is. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, getting bit on the surface iron is probably one of my favorite things to do in the salt water. Yeah. It is so fun. I think that's a nice calico. Is it? It's not fighting like a cuda, a lot of head shakes. Yeah, it is. Yeah, calico. Oh, calico. Nice. So fun. Those things are awesome. That's a good size too. Yeah, man. Damn. Good great calico out here right now. Again, if you guys aren't familiar with Southern California, this is the calico bass. One of our staple inshore and island uh, fishing species. Super fun to catch. Catch them on artificial, live bait, all the fun stuff. They get actually pretty big. I believe the record is um, four, like 14.8 or something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong uh, down in the comments, but they get pretty big. Um, obviously anything over eight pounds is considered a giant. Um, just super cool fish. And I'm gonna do a full video coming out to Catalina very soon where I just specifically target calico bass. Let this guy go real quick. Thanks, buddy. Um, with artificial lures. We wanted to do that today, but there's bluefin that were in range of the little boat, so we spent all day trying to get the bluefin struck out. So we've been fishing here for an hour and already had a great time. But stay tuned for, uh, yeah, that video. I'll come out here and I'll fish all these boiler rocks in shallow, all that stuff. Tim's getting bit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> He's gonna catch another bird. Um, oh! <laughs> but uh, yeah. Anyway, stay tuned for that video. I'll come in here, fish all the boiler rocks, the kelp lines, all that fun stuff. Try to catch some big calicos. Uh, my personal best calico, fortunately, didn't have a scale, but it was over eight pounds. I don't think it was ten, but it was a solid, solid fish. But you can't really beat great weather on the backside of Catalina Island, catching a bunch of fish like this after trolling around all day and not seeing anything. Well, that's a lie. We did see bluefin. They just yep. didn't want to bite. <laughs> there he is. There's the bald eagle. Ah, oh, dude, I called it. Shit, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, he's getting chased by a seagull. The seagull's punking him. <laughs> dude, I told you, wow. I, I know the freaking bald eagle call. Yeah. Oh, there he goes. Oh, wow. That's sick. Oh, man. Called it. Yeah. That's sick. Nice. 
the Calco. Whoa. Dang, look at the colors on that one. That's a sick one. That's a beauty. Ow. Yeah, they got they got a little, little, a little bit of something couple, there. couple of teeth there. Ooh. Yep. It's just too, buddy. I feel it feels good when they do that. <laughs> yeah, right. Sick. Nice one, man. Already got two in the bag. I don't think we need to keep any more. That one's all dark brown with this orange mouth. Nice. All right. Well, nice. I think we got to call it on that one, huh? We got to ride home. There you go. Sounds good. Sick, dude. Fun trip. Hell yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> Struck out on the bluefin, but we came in here and fished for an hour. Hour. Yeah. yeah. Plenty. Less than an hour. So that's just that. This video might just be like a quick rundown on how to fish Catalina Island. Find some structure get the chum buddy going and just have fun man it's such a beautiful place but stay tuned uh we'll see you at the fillet table to clean up those calico and then in the kitchen we're gonna do something a little bit different this time um, i'm actually gonna leave the skin on but i'm gonna scale it fish leave the skin on because i want to cook it with the skin on but we have these two nice calico bass that we we kept from the trip uh ended up being super fun getting out there and looking around for those bluefin, but even more fun getting back into the island and actually pulling on some fish. So easiest way I've found to scale a fish is just use the back of the knife and just drag it up against the scales. warm out we'll keep that guy on ice for now uh, in my opinion you don't have to obviously get every single scale just try to get a majority of them just so we can do that nice crispy skin on the outside of this play when we cook it up quick little spray Scales. You did. <laughs> I did. Yes. One last quick little once over here and see. See how we did. It's hard to get the ones. Going lefty. Going lefty to get these top ones. All right, now we're just gonna fillet it like normal. So just very similar to how I fillet the rockfish. Just do a head cut right there. Trace down the back. behind the butt right there cut down towards the tail so again now that that's traced water off of here I leave that fillet on there now that now that's traced because if you take that fillet off like I've said in my other videos you'll notice that it will kind of like bend with the head on there and it just makes it a little bit more difficult to get a clean cut on the opposite side so I, I prefer to trace both fillets and then just pop them off
go. What do you think? How's that look, Rachel? <laughs> First time seeing a calico? Looks Fully. yummy. Looks pretty good. Yep. All right. So we have it, our scaled calico fillets. And we're gonna cook these up. Should be pretty tasty. So here is one of those calico fillets. Again, we just uh, scaled it outside, wrapped it in paper towels. It's been there for a couple of days, but Rachel and I are gonna make some lunch here. So I'm heating up some oil and then I'm gonna only add garlic salt and pepper to the fish uh, because once we're done, I did make this ginger sauce last night. So it's uh, lemon juice, ginger, soy sauce, and then onion, and then we just blended that up. So we got a nice sweet sauce that we're gonna put on there. Um, but first things first, you wanna score the skin because when you're cooking in the hot oil, if you don't score the skin, it's gonna, it's gonna like roll and not cook as evenly. So just nice light cuts down the length of the of the skin here. Next important thing is to make sure it has been wrapped in paper towels for a couple of days, but just make sure it's as dry as possible. So just get another piece of paper towel and just hit it one more time. Last thing you want is uh, any water getting in that hot oil and having it just pop everywhere. So make sure it's as dry as possible. Nice even scores down the skin. Season it up. Gonna add that fish skin down first. We'll cook that for a couple of minutes. And then once it starts to get opaque all the way through, we'll flip it over, give it another minute or two on the other side and it should be done. Check underneath here. You're gonna wanna see a nice golden brown. Oh gosh, that looks perfect. Whew. How's that smell, Rachel? Delicious, surprisingly. Yeah, it actually does smell pretty good. Dripping oil, but that looks pretty, pretty done to me. So we're just gonna throw it over a bed of rice right here, some steamed rice. Yeah, it feels nice, nice and crispy. Mm. Perfect. So now we're gonna add this ginger sauce here. Green onion. sesame seeds. All right, there we have that skin on calico bass from Catalina Island. Looks really good to me. What do you think, Rachel? <laughs> looks delicious. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully it tastes as good as it looks. That's, that's the real test. Flaky. Oh, lost it. Yeah, like you can see that like cooking it with that oil, it's just nice and crunchy on the outside. Yeah. I think we might have to start cooking it this more. It's so good. Mmm.
It's like got the perfect crunch on the outside because of that skin. Man, we've been missing out. Why haven't we been cooking like this forever? This is <laughs> so good. Oh my God. That is so delicious. Highly recommended, you guys. <clears throat> I was just telling Rachel too that we could, we could probably even cook um, like our rockfish if we catch like reds and we mm -hmm. want to cook it like this as well. It's probably gonna taste just as good. But keep in mind, we were just snacking on some bluefin right before eating this. So the bar was set pretty high because Nick caught a couple of bluefin on one of his recent trips and left us a whole bluefin. So shout out to Nick. Thanks for that, man. But this calico is actually really good. I think the combination of the fish with the skin on and the way that you cooked it in the oil with the sauces, chef's kiss. Like, yeah, that's what do you, that's gotta be one of, the, one of my favorites I've cooked. I was gonna last. say, like, I'm pretty sure this is top three. Top three? Top three. All right, well, we're gonna finish this up and then we also have some more bluefin we're gonna eat. So, yeah, um, definitely saved the trip pulling into the island with Tim. Um, I had forgotten how fun it was to just anchor up and fish the island for a little bit. I think we were there for probably like an hour. Kept two legal calicos, caught a handful more, barracuda. I'm sure if we stuck it out a little longer, uh, some yellowtail would have would have cruised through because it just looks super fishy. But I'm gonna be going out there again really soon. So if you guys haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any videos. And thanks for watching. See ya.